going to look at Mark chapter 16. We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't divide the verses, then you're going to combine all the verses together and uh, create wrong doctrine. Okay, now in Mark chapter 16, this is the key here to make everything easy. Ready? Gospel of the kingdom. Now, this is extremely important to understand. With this gospel that relates to the kingdom, you got to realize this. There's a double application here. It's for Jews, and it's also for Christians. Now, this is extremely important to understand, and I'm going to explain why, okay? It's going to first, this is foremost, okay? And then what's going to happen is it's going to transition into this one. That's what happened with the gospel of the kingdom. Now, you might say, well, you won the world are you talking about. Okay, so let me explain one by one. Let's start with Mark chapter 16. Look at verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, so you'll notice that a lot of Christian churches preach about this. We're going to preach the gospel to all the world. But here's the problem. You can't say this is the Christian gospel, because look at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, that doesn't seem to make sense. There's baptism involved in this gospel. Uh, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Well, that doesn't apply to Christians. Signs and wonders are for Jews. See? So how do you handle this one? The, how you handle this is start off with Matthew 5. Okay? Go to Matthew chapter 5. The key word is gospel of the kingdom. Gospel of the kingdom. Because remember, when Jesus Christ told his disciples to preach the gospel, the gospel, what was, which gospel was Jesus preaching all that time in his ministry? If you look at Matthew 4 and 5, it's the gospel of the kingdom, right? Okay. So we're going to start out with chapter 4 and then jump to chapter 5. I'm going to show you something here. <clears throat> Look at Matthew chapter 4. Look at verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the what? Kingdom. Now, look what accompanies this gospel. Remember Mark 16 talks about two things here. It talked about baptism, which we deny is part of the gospel. And it talks about signs, which we deny is part of our Christian gospel. We claim that it's for Jews. But how do we know that? Because, look at Matthew 4. Gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of di disease among the people. See that? That matches with Mark 16, the gospel. But who is it aimed to? Look at verse 25. And there followed him great multitudes of people from where? Galilee, Jew, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, Jew, and from Judea, Jew, and from beyond Jordan, Jew. See that? So we do know this relates to Jews. But not only that, did you remember Matthew chapter 3 and verse uh, 1, Matthew 3, 1? The first record of baptism. All right, so pay attention now. This is the first record of water baptism. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And then we're going to drop down to verse 5. Then went out to him where? Jerusalem, Jew, and all Judea, Jew, and all the regions round about Jordan, Jew. Now remember, that's where Jesus targeted as well, right, at Matthew 4? What were they doing? Verse 6, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Jew. Okay, that seems to make sense now. According to Matthew 4 and Matthew chapter 3, we can see right here, it's undoubtedly true that this Mark 16 matches with that and that these baptism and signs are for the Jews. But look at chapter 5, okay? Chapter 5. It's the gospel of the kingdom. Which kingdom is this? Look at chapter 5. And verse 3, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of what? Heaven. Heaven. See that? Now uh, look at verse uh, 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of what? Heaven. heaven. See that? This is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, let's see right here. But if you keep reading that Sermon on the Mount at Matthew 5, this gospel he was preaching was the gospel of the kingdom, right? But this is the kingdom of what? Heaven, okay? What is the kingdom of heaven? We're not going to turn there, but if you look at Matthew chapter 11, I think verse 12, this kingdom of heaven is referring to an earthly kingdom. It's not up in heaven. It's talking about an earthly kingdom. An earthly kingdom that the Jews were waiting for. Because if you know your Bible, the Jews were waiting for what? A Messiah, a physical, earthly Messiah to rule on the earth. If you talk to today's Jewish rabbis, that's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for that Messiah to bring in the kingdom. It's an earthly kingdom. So, since this is the gospel of the kingdom that's earthly, it's physical. It's earthly. It's not spiritual. It's physical. It's earthly. That's why it makes sense. Jews, who, who is a spiritual nation or physical nation? Physical nation, right? This physical nation will require physical things like physical water, baptism, physical healing, signs and wonders that you can physically see and do and touch. See that? That makes sense. It's all for Jews. But here's the problem. We can't just say it's just for Jews. Hyper-dispensationalists, they're another heretical group. Hyper-dispensationalists, they deny water baptism. Now, here's the thing. We don't deny water baptism. We deny water baptism as part of salvation. You see that? That's what we deny. We deny that as part of salvation. We believe that uh, this one is included for Christians. Why? Because keep reading Matthew mm, 5 or 7. He doesn't just talk about the kingdom of heaven. He talks about kingdom of... Now look at Matthew, okay? Here's something here. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. And uh, chapter 6, actually. Chapter 6. And we will look at verse 31. 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Physical. Or what shall we drink? Physical. Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Physical. See that? Physical things. But Jesus said this first, verse 33. But seek ye first the what? Kingdom of God. That's spiritual, not physical. How do you know that? Because keep reading. And his what? Righteousness. Is that physical or spiritual? Spiritual. And all these things, remember, physical in verse 31 those physical things, shall be added unto you. See that? So there's a spiritual kingdom here, all right? Now the Jews, they were offered the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. But you can see the foremost thing is kingdom of heaven, right? Physical, 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 physical. But there's a little bit of spiritual that the Jews were offered. Now here's the thing. Christians... Do we fit in the physical kingdom, earthly kingdom? Is that what we're waiting for? Or are we waiting for, or are we applied to the spiritual kingdom? Spiritual kingdom. So here's the thing. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached, we're not applied to the physical part right here. We're applied to the what? Spiritual part right here. Because look at John 3. John 3. Kingdom of God in John 3. This is definitely Christian. John 3. Tell me if this sounds like you. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. We preach that, right? Be born again, be born again. He cannot see the what? Kingdom of God. See that? Spiritual. Spiritual. So we see right here that Christians, they are definitely applied to the kingdom of God spiritual. Okay, now, here's the... Question now. Mark 16, we know that it's talking about the gospel of the kingdom, which Jesus preached. When Jesus preached about the gospel of the kingdom, what was it? The kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. That's what Jesus preached, right? Yes, we saw that. John 3, he preached about kingdom of God. 
We saw Matthew 5 he, uh, and Matthew 6 as well. He talked about the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. So then how do we deal with Mark 16 then, right? Mark 16, the question then is, how do we know which one in this passage applies to us, which one applies to you? It's very simple. What you got to do is this. Go jump to Mark 16. Mark 16. This is very easy, okay? How you handle this is that how you can apply Mark 16 to you is if you're familiar with your Christian doctrine, okay? If you're familiar with your Christian doctrine, you can find out which part of Mark 16 you can use that applies to you and which part of Mark 16 you can't use that cannot apply to you. You see that? So if you're familiar with your Christian doctrine, uh, who, where's our Christian doctrine, Pastor? Why, that's so simple. In dispensationalism, what have you learned? Romans to Philemon. Romans to Philemon. Because if you look in all these epistles, it's addressed to what? Always. Church, 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 church. And then for Philemon and Timothy, they're part of the church, you'll notice. So we know that it's in these epistles. If anything contradicts these epistles, then we know that these things are not applied to us. You see that? Okay, so let's take Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, does that contradict Christian doctrine, where we go all over the world and preach the gospel? No, it doesn't. In fact, what did Romans to Philemon say? Paul said you should preach the gospel everywhere. See? The next part, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so water baptism is part of the gospel. That contradicts Christian doctrine definitely, right? Right. Because how do we know? Because if you look at Romans to Philemon, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I think verse 17, Paul says, I came not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So he said that water baptism is separated from the gospel. See that? There's your answer. Okay, let's keep reading right here. Verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. 17 and 18, the signs and the wonders. Okay, does that contradict Christian doctrine? Is that for Christians or for Jews? Those are for Jews. Well, how do you know that? Because Romans to Philemon. Again, look at here, look at here, look at here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 again, believe it or not, I think verse 22, it says, Jews require a sign, but not the Gentiles. There you go. So you see, by uh, comparing with your Christian doctrine in Romans to Philemon, we can find out which parts of the gospel of the kingdom applies to us and which parts do not apply to us. See that? But since it says gospel of the kingdom, we got to realize that since it's gospel of the kingdom, what is it? We see two kingdoms, kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And then what you're going to find out is, which is true, Jesus wanted them to preach this gospel to all the world. Why? Because it starts out with Jews, and eventually, where did it transition to? If you read the book of Acts, it transitioned to Christians, to non-Jews, Gentiles after that. The evidence is the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, the start of everything, right? Where did it go to? Jews. And it said what? Repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. But then you keep reading chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 13, 14. Paul says, we're turning to the Gentiles. We're going to turn away from you Jews. And then if you look at Acts 15 and the rest of the chapters, the whole church held a council that salvation, the gospel, is only by faith, not by works at all. See, so it was transitioning. That's why this gospel was preached throughout all the world. You see that? It was preached throughout all the world.